Is it possible to replicate what was done over in Japan? The migration from comics to digital, it definitely worked in Japan. If you look at the market there, you look how comics are consumed, how they're read, can we replicate that in the U.S.? I hit this topic a lot, but I want to go into a different angle of this, which is what can we copy today versus what's going to take a while? Let's get into that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, you know, I, I think I get this question a lot, uh, including from creators who, I, for whatever reason, the, the topic that's come up the most is, hey, um, I hear you talking about how it worked over in Japan in terms of digital, how we, how you know, things were able to uh, get to a certain point, how the market was able to advance technologically. I, why can't that happen in the U.S.? What can we learn? What can we start doing today that was done in Japan? And the, the, it's unfortunately, it's not quite that simple, although there are things that can be done now. Um, the, the first bit, uh, you know, the first obstacle to overcome is one I've talked about before, but it, it's worth mentioning here, which is the way people consume comics in Japan are fundamentally different on two fronts. First, you do not have the same kind of collector mentality. Do you notice, even in my videos, whenever I talk about digital, there will be plenty of people in the comments, and uh, I missed a show uh, a week ago about digital taking over and the big kind of counter argument. Uh, I wasn't there to defend against it. The big counter argument was, you know, people don't want to trust digital, that digital comics could disappear. The, com the company that is uh, providing this stuff could decide to shut down the service and then all the money you put in is gone. And that's true. That's a worry. There's a lot of uh, digital online games that had in-app purchases and you, you fund it into them. And then one day it's like, surprise, the game's shutting down and those purchases are gone. Comics are, are even worse because in the West, we have this collector's mentality where we buy something, we own it. That's very much linked to comics. And in Japan, it, it didn't really have that same kind of weighting. Yes, they definitely have collector's uh, ideas about if you buy, you own it. But the idea of a, a somebody who collected comics was, was in many cases kind of weird. Like the um, otaku kind of culture, uh, they would make fun of it. In fact, you can read comics where in the comics, there's a character who like collects the comics. Like you keep these things, you read them, and then you keep them. Why? So strange. You know, you you weirdo. That's kind of culturally kind of a, a foundation. So that's one major difference uh, between Japan and the West, and that is a preventative to digital really pulling off. Because if if you have these different ideas about ownership and rights. Um, it, it definitely changes things. And the other is simply, the it, I mentioned this before, it, there's a commuter um, culture there. And what, what that means is a lot of people get on the train to go from point A to point B. And on the train, it's, it's like mass transit here in the U.S., like a couple areas where you have people who do not own a car or you know, rarely are in a car, rarely have to be the one who is uh, taking command of the transportation. So when you're sitting back passively, it's a perfect time to read manga or play games. Unfortunately, a lot of the digital games in Japan that took off were ones that did not require a network uh, or are comics. And because when you're in the train, you're coming in and out of network and everything else, the idea of a connected game uh, or a connected experience is, was, was minimized. They, they needed to make it work with low-impact phones. And part of that is also the, the culture. Uh, Japan, uh, they're, the phone types, the actual devices that a lot of people grew up with, they started with smartphones early, but those smartphones were really, uh, I don't want to say poor, just very, very low memory. There was very limited things you could do with it. A lot of people's first experience with smartphones in the U.S. was around the iPhone, which was a you know little computer that you held in your hand. And so because of that, a lot of the development and a lot of the pushing toward that platform, it started from a better place. Therefore, people never learned the lesson about being frugal with your memory and your experiences that you have on the phone. You're, you're, I, I believe to this day that... You see a lot of the kind of comicsology guided reading where a panel would animate from one place to another. And Marvel was really hung up in that in the 2008, 2012 kind of era. You had that Marvel AR thing that would, would show up. Marvel with comics was really fixated on this idea that it wasn't just going to be a comic. It was going to be a moving comic. It was going to be something where 
you could have an interview while you're reading the comic. And they, they, they went too far. And I remember having discussions with people who were like, we can't just take the comic and scan it and put it on a device. We've got to bring more to it. Fans are going to want more. They're going to want like a little movie. And I, I maintain to this day that was a terrible, terrible way to think about it. Fans didn't want movies. They wanted a good comic reading experience. And a lot of these gimmicks and things they inserted into it actually prevented that, that experience from happening. But regardless, those are two big factors that are different in the West than Japan. You do not have the same audience in terms of when people are reading the comic. You don't have that commuter audience that really benefits from just having stacks and stacks of things to read in a very simple way on the phone. And you also have this collector mentality you have to get over. So how do you do that? Well, the best option for these things really taking off is for an independent, a non-Marvel, non-DC, to replicate what Shonen Jump has done in terms of make a portal, make a, a simple app that's got a lot of comics inside of it, very, very similar to Webtoons. In fact, the Webtoon model, if you go on a browser and look at it, is actually quite quite good. The mobile versions of that is where it breaks down a little bit. There's just some usability things. And again, it comes across like somebody trying to overthink it. If you go to Show to Jump and you pull up uh, One Piece or My Hero Academia or one of those books, you will get basically one bit of instruction. And, and that is you read right to left, not left to right. So therefore, when you open it up and you, you open the first comic and you try and swipe right, uh, the, the little message will come up saying, hey, you know, dummy, you're American, you're reading it the wrong way. Swipe the other way. And there you go. And you can pinch zoom and you can do everything else. But that's it. There are no other frills, no uh, costly development time needed. Because the other thing is the the labor involved. Once you take a comic and you say, okay, we're not just going to scan it and have it, you know, an easy swipe left, right, you know, pinch zoom using the device. We're not, we're not going to, we're going to need to enable more than that. We're going to need some animated backgrounds. So we're going to need you know, this kind of guided, this panel will show, and then three seconds later, we'll go to another panel. As soon as you start inserting that stuff in, you're inserting labor that has to be done to the comic. And so if, if your goal is, hey, let's get these 50,000 comic books into the mobile app because the library is what's really going to sell this service. Well, now you've got 50,000 comics you have to process and, and try and figure out. And the whole thing falls over. That's, that's why it, it, keeps, it keeps stopping. It's, it's why I think the most successful thing is for a small company, and this is where a boom or a vault or even an idea, IDW, somebody like that, needs to basically hire a development firm, um, say, make me Shonen Jump, just same exact thing, same structure, same you know, bookmarking, everything else. And in many cases, the other thing I think that would be really valuable, and here's where, if you are a group of people online and you're trying to come up with your own comic, you're trying to build Mindshare, rather than chase the old model or chase crowdfunding. And when I say chase crowdfunding, there's nothing wrong with crowdfunding. But crowdfunding is still the end product. The thing that you're putting out is still a physical comic book printed in, you know, in pages, same general size and format, and you got to get a colorist and all the rest. Why not go for mass, go for scale, get people to come up with six to eight pages of comics. And just as soon as you have them, start putting them out, start publishing them to the site. And before long, you have chapter one, chapter three, chapter 50, chapter hundred. That's one of the things that's powerful about My Hero Academia, One Piece, and all these other Shonen Jump titles is you open it up and it's like, start reading chapter 78, start reading chapter 243. If you put out small bits of comic at a time, and that's what Japan really kind of popularized. They, they put the barrier for a creator to print and publish a comic. They made that as thin and as shallow and as fast as possible. They basically made it so that you, you know, you, you, not a lot of time had to happen. You, you create it, you post it, you create it, you post it. And then they let the creator and the fans do the rest of the work to prioritize it, to download it, to create you know, some indexing to be able to say, hey, this 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 particular issue has been read 5,000 times. This one's been read 5 million times. And they put just some basic weighting to say, here's what's popular. And you start to build out some indexing. If I read this comic, a lot of other readers read this comic. So let's make a connection there and start to promote that up to people. I think that that's the way to build mindshare, to build market share, is to simply do it that way. Not that hard. Now, the trick here is how do you make money? And the problem is 
Uh, in the beginning, it's very hard to make money in this format. You don't have the brand recognition. You don't have the the time. And, you know, comics cost money to make. That's why this almost functions better as an independent, as a smaller company that can basically put some of this stuff out, give the latest chapter away for free, and charge a subscription or charge a cost if you are going to go back in time. And, and so you're gambling on the offering is so compelling that when I read a chapter, I have to... Yeah, you know, I want to see what the back story is. So that's why the one of part of the Shona Jump model that's so smart is you get the the last three chapters for free. But they're gaining new members, new audiences all the time. So people come in and they start reading chapter 63, the latest chapter, and they're like, oh, it's pretty good. I'll read the previous two chapters. And then they hit the wall. Now they need to fund it to pay to basically unlock the subscription so they can go all the way back to issue one. Once they've done that, they become subscribers. Now they're going to consume very slowly one issue at a time as they come out, one story at a time, but they're paying that subscription. It's a, it's a very, very clever way to hook an audience and get ongoing revenue. The clever part about it is you rarely get people leaving the app because you've got all this content and all this volume, and it really is is hooked on the, you know, by seeing the most current issue, you're making this one gamble that people are not going to just set a reminder for themselves to check the app once a week to read that chapter for free and then discard it. You, 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 very few people, it's just not common user behavior. Most people don't want to have to remember like that, and most people want to go back to the beginning. So both those factors mean you're going to get subscribers, and you start building them up more and more over time. You get yourself a healthy little business. But these are just some of the factors, some of the things that we can adopt today. I, I definitely think there's some things to be made right now And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't trying right now to make some of this stuff. And hopefully I can work with some great creators to bring this to the market. But this is how we need to be thinking. Um, We can certainly replicate what's already being done. We can certainly do printed comics and continue that model. And people are and people should. But we have to start trying some of these new experiments because I don't think they're that very hard. And I think the roadmap in many cases has been laid out to us by other companies in other countries. But what do you think? Leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the matter. Anxious to hear your ideas, your thoughts. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications if you feel like it. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening.